إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبد الله ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليمًا كثيرًا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اللهم صل على محمد في الأولين وصل وسلم وزد وبارك على سيدنا محمد في الآخرين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد في الملأ الأعلى يا أرحم الراحمين Always we begin with the praise of Allah We send our choices, blessings and salutations upon our Nabi Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم We testify with firmness and conviction that none is worthy of worship but Allah and that our Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his worshipping slave and final messenger. I continue to command you and remind myself and you of taqwa Allah azza wa jal. And I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inherits in myself and you a consciousness and an awakening that which profits us in our privacy more so than what we seek to show each other publicly. That I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases our love for Allah and our fear of our Maker, the Almighty, and that we have greater and greater hope in His mercy in this life and as we proceed to our return to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of the greatest knowledge is the knowledge of the self. Man anta? Who are you? And in answering that question, you come to understand what is required of you. And today, inshallah, in these few minutes, in this blessed day of Jumu'ah, and in this blessed hour of Khutbat al Jumu'ah, I wish to bring together some of the bits of information that we have been given as an inheritance from our Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but to sew them together with the threads of light of the words of Allah from the Qur'an, that they become something that makes sense within our heart, logically easy to understand and facilitate and be able to pass on and teach through our mind and rationale, but more importantly, that it increases our levels of ihsan of seeking to worship Allah as if He is present before us, witnessed by our own eyes. And we know that although we cannot see our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala in this dunya, that He is always aware and seeing of us, hearing of us subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today I wish to speak a little bit about the hadith of Jibreel. The hadith of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu wa arda. And I know all of us, we've understood this hadith where Jibreel in the form of a man came and asked the Prophet Sallallahu important questions that were so important that at the end of it, the Prophet wants them to know that the one who came to teach you your religion was sent by Allah in this capacity as a human being because everything in this hadith is the nature and the purpose of your life. The youngest of us, if asked, what is Islam? What is Iman and what is Ihsan? They recall the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, this hadith of Jibreel radiallahu anhu, an, an, an Umar radiallahu anhu, that Jibreel asked the Prophet these three questions and the Prophet answered with the answers you and I know. But I wish to step back once and ask you that question in beginning. 
who are you, and more importantly, what are you? As you sit before me and as I stand in the flesh before you, the first component of who I am is I am a badan. I'm a physical being. Without a soul, without rationale before you, I am elements of this earth. In the hadith of Imam al-Tirmidhi, the Prophet wasallam, he witnessed that there was a man from Habasha who came to al Madina. And this man traveled all this distance and died in the city of the Prophet Sallallahu Allahumma ja'alna, Allahumma ja'alna mujawarat al Nabiya Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. May Allah make us neighbors to our Nabiya Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in life and after death and in Jannah. Allahumma ameen. So the Prophet, when he heard of the man's death, this Ethiopian man, he said, Allahu Akbar. He came from there to be buried in the dust he was created from. Allahu Akbar. The earth that will house your body is the same element that you originated from. And when I speak about the depth of the earth, Adam السلام, is referred to Adam because he comes from Adim al Ard. He's from the depth of the earth. That's where we get the name Adam. The very molecules and elements that you and I are made of, we will return to it. Minha khalaqnakum wa fiha nu'idukum wa minha nukhrijukum taratan ukhra. According to our aqeedah, aqeedah ahl sunnah wal jama'ah al qadi iyad in kitab al shifa, he said that there is no more important, blessed, tahir, cleansed, pure, Mubarak earth than the earth that touches the skin of the Prophet ﷺ in his qabr. Even more important in its barakah than the earth that the Kaaba sits upon. ﷺ. And therefore, you see that the closest to a Nabi ﷺ from his companions is the closest to him where? In his dust. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu is from similar makeup, similar dust to our Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And who's closer to Abu Bakr? The neighbor Umar radiallahu anhu wa arda. And who is from those who are near Ahl al And therefore there's this level of attachment to be from the earth of Medina. So the Prophet sallallahu said, Allahu Akbar, this man came from there to be buried here. You and I are abadan, physical. The elements that make me up are the same elements similar to the wood, to the trees, to the earth. Everything created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a badan in its origin, has a physicality in its origin, has a resonance in its origin, and all of us are attached to each other in one way or another. That's why you as a believer, you don't find it strange to hear of inanimate, unliving objects reacting in a living capacity to our Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When our Nabi Sallallahu stood on the mountain of Uhud, it began to shake. And he said, Uthbut ya Uhud, fa inna alayka Nabi, Uhud be still. The Prophet of God has ascended you, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You don't find it strange in the hadith of Imam Muslim, and al jiz'a han, that the tree, as you see a tree near our minbar here, it began to weep audibly. Sound, the Sahaba could hear it. Sound is the movement. It makes waves that people could hear. That the tree audibly in its sound made a sound of crying at the loss of the Prophet ﷺ being near it when he began to stand on his mimbar for khutbat al-jumu'ah. And he descended from the mimbar. وَضَمَّ الْجِزَعْ He hugged the tree sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He began to whisper to it sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hatta askata. Until he said something to it that silenced the crying of the tree. Later in other riwayat outside Muslim, some of the sahaba said, what did you say? He said to it, if you be quiet, I will ask Allah Rabbul Izzah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To make you my nakhla in Jannah. So it was quiet. 
And had I not quieted it down, it would have wept until Qiyam al-Sa'a, the day of the hour's arrival. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Your body is sacred. And therefore you hear the words of the Prophet Sallallahu Your badan, your physical being. Leave your soul for now. We're going to come to your soul. We're going to come to your mind. لِبَدَنِكَ عَلَيْكَ حَقْ you must eat right, exercise right, dress right, act right, fulfill the haq of your body. The badan is given to you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is an amana from Allah, Rabbul Izza. And you would find that our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam was very particular with his state of body. He was particular with his health, with his food intake. He was particular when he ate, what he ate, how he ate, who he ate with. He would even say to you, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as is in Sahih Muslim, لا يأكل طعامك إلا تقي. Don't share your food regularly, habitually with people who don't have and lack piety. Because the blessing of it is derived, is taken away. He would say to you, say Bismillah, so that you can enjoy it and find the health and the vigor that Allah has blessed in it. You are a badan. But this badan genetically is shared with other things that walk and crawl and are unlike us as a human species. Those of you who are old enough to remember, before they could do heart transplants, they used to try to fix a human heart. Sometimes there's a gen congenital heart failure. There's a congenital disease where a, 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 a valve in the heart begins to seep blood. Instead of keeping the blood out, it loosens and blood flows back in. You're going to die. So what did they do? They said, we need to find an animal that is close enough genetically to a human being to take the valve, place it in a human heart so that this man, this woman can live. So they went to one of the closest things to you and I genetically. The first most successful usage was from a pig, from the swine. They took its valve and they put it in human, human beings' hearts, sewed it up and gave it a cocktail of drugs so it doesn't reject it and the people would live. Because you are not just a badan. Your badan is like many other things, even things that don't stand as you and I stand. So you're something else. The second part of you is that you've been given aql, discernment, rationale, understanding, an ability to think. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says of the greatest of miracles, Ar-Rahman, Allama al-Qur'an, Khalaq al-Insan, Allamahu al Bayan. Bayan exceeds the aql. Bayan isn't just that you think. See, other animals, they speak, but they don't have bayan. They don't have the ability to elucidate, to give greater meaning. They are not able to perform poetry, to understand right from wrong in greater capacities than just this is good and bad, but to be able to explain why. Go home today, sit with your cat. And tell your cat, have sabr. Wait, I will feed you in three hours. Try to teach your cat time. Try to tell your cat tomorrow. Try to give it consequence. Instead of, no, 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 be patient. Try to speak to your eight-month-old your eight baby. As a mother, say to your son, no, no, I'm not going to feed you now. Wait half an hour. Does it understand half an hour? Does it understand delay of time? La. Does it understand the ability to convince people of waiting for time, which is the duty of al anbiya What is the duty of the anbiya Litunzira. To give warning. Warning of what? There's a day of Qiyamah. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqu allaha wal tanzur nafsu ma qaddamat this is the aql that you and I have been given. That I can sit with you and rationalize with you and say to you, Ya akhi, isbir. Animals don't have this concept of sabr. There's no isbiru wa sabiru wa rabitu. It is I'm going to eat, 
here and now, and I won't go beyond what my badan can take. Subhanallah. When Allah gives the example of those who go as human beings into the realm of animals, He says, Some human beings, they have aql, they have a badan. They use their badan and leave their aql. So they are like these animals. In fact, they're worse. Why you're worse? Because your body wants to eat whatever it wants. But it doesn't have what animals have, which is to say, I don't need to eat, so I will wait till I'm hungry. A lion doesn't walk into its forest and kill 15 zebras unnecessarily. It will kill one or two to eat and then leave the rest. Watch those National Geographic with your children. The lion will run after one. Once it catches it, all the other zebras that were running, they stop. And they go around eating again. Why did the zebra stop? Because it knows that the lion is, uh, is an animal that will only fulfill the badan. It doesn't want more. It doesn't yatra, go to excess. So when you and I go to excess, we sink below the actions of the animals. The third aspect that you and I have been given that exceeds now not just the animals, because animals think and talk, not as much as we do. Allah says, قَالَتْ نَمْلَةً The ant spoke. يَا أَيُّهَا النَّمْلُ دْخُلُوا مَسَاكِنَكُمْ Enter into your homes. لَيَحْطِمَنَّكُمْ سُلَيْمَانُ وَجُنُودُ Sulaiman is coming, his troops are coming. Al-Imam ibn al-Qayyim, he speaks about 15 different ada of lugha for an ant. 15 different word usages that an ant uses. Conversational skills. It knows who you are. MashaAllah, there's Yahya. Knows your name. Knows the job and the function you are. It doesn't say Sulaiman and people. It says Wajunudu, his soldiers. It knows who we are, what we are, what we do. Qala Nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Al ulama, Allahumma ja'alna minhum. The people of ilm, and when we use this word ulama, we use it in the context of Al Imam al Shafi'i. Al-alim man alim man amila bima ya'lam. Al-alim, one of discernment, is the one who practices what they know. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. When you and I, when the ulama, al-kibar, walk by the ocean, the Prophet ﷺ said, taqulu al-hitan, the fish, they say, Allahumma ghfir lah. Oh Allah, give him forgiveness. In another riwayah, مُعَلِّمِ النَّاسِ الْخَيْرِ The one who teaches people good things. اللَّهُمَّ جَعَلْنَا مِنْهُمْ That the ant, فِي جُحْرِهَا In its hole, it looks up at this person, man or woman, and says, اللَّهُمَّ اغْفِرْ لَهُ اللَّهُمَّ جَعَلْنَا مِنْهُمْ They know us, even if we don't know them. The third aspect that you and I have been blessed with is we have a badan, a physical being, we have a aql, and we have a ruh. We have a ruh. Which nobody else has but us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the ruh, destined it for Bani Adam, for you and I, that we will be those who are accountable. Wa nafsin wa ma sawaha. You are accountable for how much tazkiyah you have for your soul. How much you're going to purify yourself. Get yourself ready for the day you've been told is coming. That an animal doesn't understand. It doesn't know tomorrow's coming. But you know Al-Ghad is coming. You know something better is waiting for you. Have you ever thought about what that word Al-Akhirah means? What does the word, if I say Jazakallahu Khaira, Akhira and Khaira come from the same word. What does it mean? If I'm late, if I was coming late, and subhanallah, somebody had the barakah and the rizq of speaking to you instead of me, I would say, subhanallah, ta'akhart. I came late. It's not ta'akhart. Allah gave me khair for not being here. When, whenever you are late, it's not late. It's that you've been given good because you were late. The concept, the belief of a believer is that whatever you don't have is always khair. I'm late. It's not I'm late for the meeting. Allah prevented me from the meeting. Allah gave me good to not be in the meeting. Ta'akhart, it's khayr has happened to me. Subhana rabbi al-a'la. And therefore, wal al-akhiratu khayrun 
لك من الأولى صلى الله عليه وسلم So how does the hadith of Jibreel fit in this? I want you to understand now these are the three parts of every human being. You are physical, intellectual, and spiritual. So Islam came, Iman came, and Ihsan came to meet the needs of each one of those three parts of you. So when you look at Mal Islam, what is Islam? It's all physical. Shahada, say it. Salah, move. Siyam, hunger, feel. You feel it. Zakah, give it. Has to be, not has to be something given. Hajj, you can't watch TV and perform Hajj. You have to walk the walk, dress the clothes, make the ihram. Every aspect of Islam is physical to subdue your physical essence as a human being. Iman is all intellectual. Yu'minuna billah. I haven't seen Allah. But yet you say, Ashhadu, I witness. But you haven't witnessed. If there's an accident behind me outside on the road and the police come and say, Did you witness the accident? I say, I heard it. Somebody told me about it. I didn't witness it. Witness means, ayn. So what do you see of Allah? Al-Iman. That my heart, I close it to the fact that there is something other than Allah. La ilaha nafi nothing illa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa malaikatihi the angels wa kutubihi wa rusuli wa al-yawm al-akhir wa al-qadr all of these are things that takes an immense amount of faith to dispense with what others would tell you is illogical because your mind must come towards the naql. And the people of Sunnah, we've always held this belief. That we put what has been revealed before what we think about what has been revealed. Allahumma ja'alna min ahli sunnah ya arham rahimin The third aspect is that you have been given ihsan. That you are ordered to worship Allah as if you see Him, and if you cannot see Him, you know that He sees you. This is the soul, mushahadatun nafs. That your soul feels the presence of Allah in the good and the bad in all things. Now let me take it one step further. When the Prophet ﷺ is asked, Who is a Muslim? He does not sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say a Muslim is the one who prays five times a day, fasts the month of Ramadan, gives zakah and does hajj and says, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah. He says, Al Muslim, man salim al Muslimuna min lisanihi wa yadi. A believer is the one who, a, a, a Muslim, a submitter to Allah, is the one who other Muslims are free from the harm of his tongue and hand. If we have a visitor amongst us today, a non-Muslim visitor, he will say, see, I knew these Muslims, they only look after each other. Their prophet is telling them, hand and tongue don't hurt other Muslims. That's the weakest level of Islam. That's the bare minimum. That's where you haven't yet ascended with your rationale, ascended with your soul. The second level, when he's asked, who's a mu'min? Mal mu'min? Who's a believer? He says, man aminahu nas sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A believer is the one who all humanity, not just Muslim, all humanity find in them security. They find security for their properties, their wealth, and their person, their life. Once upon a time, when Islam and Iman was practiced as we seek it to return, Allahumma ja'alna مِنْ أَهْلِ الْإِسْلَامِ وَالْإِيمَانِ يَا أَرْحَمَ الرَّاحِمِينَ We used to be the safeguard of the world. Before the Crusades and the Spanish Inquisition came against the Muslim community of Cordova, of Espana, Al-Andalusia, before Al-Andalus was lost to the Muslims, the Catholic Inquisition began with the Jewish people. So the Sultan and the Khalifa at the time sent an armada of ships to Spain from Al-Maghrib. 
and said to the Jewish rabbis, the Jewish people, put all your property, put all your books, put all your livestock, put all your clothes, put all your men and women and children and come and live in our lands. The number, largest number of Jewish diaspora in the world was in Al-Maghrib. Until now, the Moroccan quarter, the Jewish quarter. Where did they come from? Because we saved their life from the tyranny of those who sought to bring an end to it. So what is the third level? What is Ihsan? يقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا ذبحتم فأحسنوا Look at the word Ihsan فأحسنوا الذبحة Show Ihsan to the animal صلى الله عليه وسلم Do you know what this means, يا أخي? It means that we don't just care for other Muslims alone. But as our iman grows, we care for every human being. And as your iman increases to ihsan and you know Allah, that you cannot see him, Rabbul Izza, in this life. But you know he is witness to you, sees you. So even with an animal, you are gentle. The Prophet ﷺ saw some young men practicing to shoot. And they saw a target of a bird, a pigeon. And he said, are you going to eat it? Are you hunting? They said, no, we're just practicing. He said, don't ever do this, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He saw a bird that was squeaking because some of the sahaba in hunger went to its nest and took its eggs, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said, return it to the mother. When our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, كما روى الإمام مسلم, exited his masjid, he saw a, a camel that was overburdened, too much on its back. And as soon as it saw him, shahaqat, it let out a, a whimper and it began to tear in the eye. The Prophet ﷺ walked to it and made it sit and took off its burden and said, Laysa min khiyarina, you can't be one of us if you do this to your own animal. Islam, Iman, and Ihsan were sent to fix every aspect of your humanness, Ya Bani Adam. Your physicality is subdued. So I want you now to begin to understand those hadith of the Prophet ﷺ in greater capacity. You young man who's sitting in front of me unable to get married, you young sister unable to get married, you find that there's deeq and difficulty. So they would come to the Prophet ﷺ and would say, fast. Why? It will help you restrain your gaze. It will weaken your body a little bit in that lustful pursuit. Islam heals your physical needs. Iman heals your intellectual incapacities. Ihsan raises up your regard and your soul to that which is pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I leave you with this blessed hadith of our Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. La yu'minu ahadukum. You can never achieve completeness of faith. Hatta yuhibbu li akhihi ma yuhibbuhu li nafsi. Hadith we all know. Until you should love for your fellow man, and I use that translation accurately. Al-Imam al-Nawawi in explaining this hadith in his Sharh of sahih Muslim, he says, Ukhuwat al-insaniyya. It's the brotherhood of man, not the brotherhood of Islam. You cannot be a believer until you love for your fellow man what you love for yourself. And of the greatest love you and I should have for ourselves, if our Islam and Iman and Ihsan is of worth, is that we love for other people to achieve it. And therefore the ulama are the most generous amongst people. The prophets of Allah are the ones who've given that inheritance to the ulama. They're the ones who dispense it, who share it with us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala attach us to the ulama that they can help us overcome our physical badan, our aql and rationale, and the limitations and lacking of our ihsan. أقول قول هذا وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم
الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعد محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم In conclusion, my dear brothers and sisters, as a part of my development and your development is to begin to ascend the stages of our worship in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is a difference between praying with your body and praying with your body and mind. And there's a difference between praying with your body and your mind and praying with your body and your mind and your soul. The difference is as simple as knowing the meaning of the surahs you read most often. Wallahi, ya akhi, ya ukhti, if you come after a long day at work and you've had a boss who's been excessive, harsh, critical, and you sat with yourself and you come to pray Salatul Asr. And the same surah you might read, all of us we read, Inna a'tainaka al-kawthar, I know. You come for Asr, Allahu anna alhamdulillah rabbi, Inna a'tainaka al-kawthar. Because it's easy and it's short and I don't know the meaning of the others, so what difference does it make? The shorter the better. But now change it. Not just what you say with your tongue, but let your mind get involved. Inna a'tainaka al-kawthar. Learn what is behind what you read. I have given you an abundance, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. O ummah of Muhammad, I've given you an abundance of good. Whatever harshness, difficulty, hardship in your life, look to the good. Inna a'tainaka al-kawthar. Fasalli. So maintain your devotion. Wanhar and share in the sacrifice towards others. Give others, feed others. It's a constitution of life. I've had this hardship, subhanAllah, I've had 10 good for every one hardship. Al Imam ibn al Qayyim, he says, every door that Allah closes in your face, min rahmati, from His mercy, yaftahu laka sab'ina baban min hikmati. He will open for you 70 doors from his hikmah and rahmah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna a'tainaka al-kawthar. I've given you an excessive abundance of good. Fasalli. Humble yourself to me. Worship me. Wanhar. Inna shani'aka huwa al-abtar. If you can accomplish these things, the one who seeks to overwhelm you, you will be superior to them. The one who seeks to obliterate you, you will ascend them. The one who seeks to wipe you clean, you will have victory over them. And as our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam remained patient, looking towards the next day, look towards it ourselves, Allahumma Ameen. I pray that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala protects the jama'ah of Green Lane Masjid and the masajid of our, my dear brothers and sisters in the United Kingdom. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends his rahmah upon the people of the United Kingdom, opens our hearts of love for each other. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives our sins, accepts from us our tawbah, and returns us to him before we return to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects our elders and our seniors, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes those who are in leadership amongst us the best of us and those who are under them from those who are willing to cooperate upon truth. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala joins us with our Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Jannatul Firdaus. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends healing upon the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Healing upon those who are in our jama'ah today and those who are absent. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in particular sends his rahmah and his shifa to my dear brother Muhammad Khan, an elder of your community. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him ease and that for his family, Allahumma ameen, in this difficult hour. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises us upon the sunnah of our Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as we walk this earth and as we are entombed in it and as we are returned to him on the day of judgment. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةِ وَصَلِّ اللَّهُمَّ وَسَلِّمْ وَزِدْ وَبَارِكْ عَلَى سَيِّدِنَا مُحَمَّدْ
الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله استووا تراسوا واعتدلوا أتموا صفوفكم ولا تختلفوا straighten your lines ensure that there are no gaps give your attention to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala humble yourselves Allahu Akbar Subhanak Allahumma bihamdika tabarak suqat alajadak A'udhu billahi al-sameen alayhi wa al-shaytan al-rajim Alhamdulillahi wa nabdi wa nabdi Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين وإذ قال إبراهيم رب جعل هذا البلد آمنا واجنبني وبني أن نعبد الأصنام رب إنهن أضللن كثيرا من الناس فمن تبعني فإنه من وَمَنْ عَصَانِي فَإِنَّكَ غَفُورٌ رَّحِيمٌ رَبَّنَا إِنِّي أَسْكَنْتُ مِنْ ذُرِّيَّتِي بِوَادٍ غَيْرِ ذِي زَرْعٍ عِنْدَ بَيْتِكَ الْمُحَرَّمِ رَبَّنَا رَبَّنَا لِيُقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةِ فاجعل أفئدة من الناس تهوي إليهم وارزقهم وارزقهم من الثمرات لعلهم يشكرون ربنا إنك تعلم ما نخفي وما نعلم وما يخفى على الله من شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء الحمد لله الذي وهب لي على الكبر إسماعيل وإسحاق إن ربي لسميع الدعاء رب اجعلني مقيم الصلاة ومن ذريتي ربنا وتقبل دعاء ربنا اغفر لي ولوالدي ربنا اغفر لي ولوالدي وللمؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب Allahu Akbar Subhan Rabbi Sami'a Allahu Liman Hamidah Alhamdulillah 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 Allahu Akbar الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر 
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين بسم الله الرحمن والضحى والليل إذا سجى ما ودعك ربك وما قلى وللآخرة خير لك من الأولى ولسوف يعطيك ربك فترضى ألم يجدك يتيما فآوى ووجدك ضالا فهدى ووجدك عائلا فأغنى فأما اليتيم فلا تقهر وأما السائل فلا تنهر وأما بنعمة ربك فحدث الله أكبر سبحان ربي العظيم وبحمده سبحان ربي وبحمده سبحان سبوح قدوس سمع الله لمن حمده كثيرا مباركا فيه من السماوات الله اكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا اللهم صل اللهم انت السلام ومنك السلام ذكرك وشكرك فتنة المحيا والممات فتنة المسيح السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله